Good morning. A warm welcome to each one of you to our service this morning. Very glad to see you all. Um, this morning, just uh, let me just bring to your attention uh, a few things. First of all, uh, remember next week will be our cafe service and that will be held in the main hall there, so you can perhaps use that uh, door for it. Uh, this will be something uh, that we as uh, Wesker uh, have not done, but uh, it's good to, to try different things and see the different expressions of worshipping God in different ways. Um, if you read the Bible, you would find uh, many various different ways of people worshipping God. So uh, please come along uh, uh, next week. And then on the 17th, we will have our harvest service. Uh, so I would urge you all to come prepared and we want to really celebrate uh, this uh, particular Sunday, followed by uh, lunch. Uh, and encourage your friends and anybody who's may be interested, bring them along for uh, that service and we can enjoy lunch afterwards and fellowship. Um, there's Bible study, um, as I mentioned, um, every now and then, uh, Wednesday. Uh, so Bible, Bible study, 7 o'clock in the vestry. Uh, please come along. I am sure you would be uh, richly blessed uh, through reflecting on God's word and learning from each other. Um, there will be tea and coffee after the service, um, as usual. Please do stay back for a cup of tea and coffee and um, try to find the biscuit you like, right? And if you don't, all I would say, be bold, be strong. For the biscuits are there and you go just go around and find one, right? Um, and so if not, then just follow my example. Uh, and lastly, uh, let me just read this card out to you. This is one of our uh, uh, church members, um, Kathy Walker, uh, wrote this uh, card. Said, uh, "Thank you very much for the beautiful flowers you sent me on Sunday. Uh, I phoned Alan on Sunday to thank him. So uh, remember, Kathy and." A uh, number of other people in our prayers. Uh, I didn't see if maybe uh, the name was on Dean's name was on the list. No, uh, please do remember Dean uh, because I didn't ask uh, uh, Bill to put that on. Um, but Dean um, is, um, I think, on the mend. Is yeah, kind of. Uh, Dean experienced, you know, another infection and. In, his arm, so he's in hospital. Uh, please remember him, uh, especially in your prayers, and Karen and other family members. Uh, um, and lastly, we are absolutely delighted to have Jane in our midst. Uh, she stays down in Birmingham, um, and she uh, has been visiting us for, since uh, Wednesday. I wouldn't say more, I would just ask Jane to come forward and just uh, have a wee chat uh, with us. <coughs> so if you go closer than here, right? Jane, very welcome um, and uh, we are very uh, glad to have you in our midst. Um, Jean joined us actually uh, on Bible Study Group uh, and uh, for the last three years or so, yeah. uh, nearly three, three years. years, yes, she's been with us. So how has your experience been? Or let's just tell us what you do and uh, how did you find the, the group and how your experience has been? Well, it was during the second lockdown. Um, the first lockdown, I moved in with elderly relatives to help them, but I wasn't doing that for the second one. So I was going to be on my own at home so I decided to look for some extra Bible study groups that I could join on Zoom. And I googled Zoom Bible study Wednesday evenings to see what came up. And actually quite a few groups came up and I wrote them all down on a list. 
And this group wasn't at the top of the list, but it was the first group I felt guided to try. So I joined that first time and my boob greeted me and everybody in the group welcomed me and I never felt like a visitor. I always felt like a member of the group. And now nearly three years later and the lockdowns have all finished, but I'm still with the group and still logging on every Wednesday evening. Good, good, great. great. Uh, what would you say to anybody who may be watching uh, the service uh, uh, and to some of our folks who we have been urging to join? I'd say do it. It's a very, very friendly group. It's very informal. Everybody listens to what everybody else has to say. There's respect for everybody's opinion. It's a really, really friendly group. And I always leave on Wednesday evenings having learned something extra about the Bible that I didn't know when I joined. Well, thank you very much and hope you enjoyed Selvis too. Thank you. Let us turn our attention to worshipping God now. Our call to worship is taken from Paul's letter to Philippians, chapter 4, starting from verse 10. And you would see the text on the screen. Paul wrote to Philippians saying, In my life in union with the Lord, it is a great joy to meet that uh, after so long a time you once more had the chance of showing that you care for me. So Paul is writing to them uh, in response to what Philippians had uh, sent him as a, as a help. So he continues, he says, I don't mean that you had stopped caring for me. You just had no chance to show it. And I'm not saying this because I feel neglect, neglected, for I have learned to be satisfied with what I have. I know what it is to be a need and what it is to have more than enough. I have learned this secret so that anywhere at any time I am content, whether I am full or hungry, whether I have too much or too little, I have the strength to face all conditions by the power that Christ gives me. Amen. Let us worship God with the power that Christ gives us as we sing Mission Praise number 600. Sing to God new songs of worship. If you are able to stand, please don't feel obliged uh, to stand.
Let us bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for being good to us. We experience your faithfulness every day in so many ways. We thank you for the life that you have given us and with it all the opportunities that we receive to show your love and share it with others. We also thank you for the challenges that we face in our lives. Many a times these challenges really become difficult for us and yet we know that you are a sovereign God who never forsakes us and never leaves us. We thank you for Jesus Christ whom you sent to show your ultimate love for us who lived among us, who reached out to the, the outcast, who was blamed for being unrighteous and yet he continued to go out to find the sick and those who were abandoned. He not only saved them, brought them into the community, but also gave them the right to be his friends. And we thank you, Lord, that we once were strangers, and yet you brought us into your fold through Jesus Christ, who died for us and gave us the right to become your children. We give you glory for what you have done for us. The salvation that we receive through Jesus Christ and the eternal life that we would enjoy with you forever. All of this you have done for us. And yet we look, when we look at our own life, we know that we have not been faithful to you. We have done the things that we shouldn't have done. We have said the things that have offended others. And so, Lord, we confess our failings. Remembering your faithfulness and rely on your faithfulness. We come before you and ask you to forgive us for the sake of Jesus Christ. Restore us so that we can continue to walk in your ways and to demonstrate your love and mercy through our daily lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, we receive that forgiveness. Lord, we thank you that you always give us chances after chances to come back and be reconciled with you. And so, Lord, as we seek to honor your name, we ask you to give us strength, help us to look forward to your presence and your word and your, your fellowship. Be with us as we seek to worship more and open our hearts to listen to you. For we ask this all through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Once again, we raise our voices and worship God with this very well-known hymn, Lord, the light of your love is shining, mission praise number 445. <laughs>
Our reading this morning is taken from the Old Testament, uh, Exodus chapter 15, uh, starting from verse 22 to 27. It's just a short passage. Let us hear God's word. Then Moses led the people of Israel away from the Red Sea into the desert of Shur. For three days they walked through the desert, but found no water. Then they came to a place called Mara, but the water there was so bitter that they could not drink it. That is why it was named Mara. The people complained to Moses and asked, What are we going to drink? Moses prayed earnestly to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood, which he threw into the water, and the water became fit to drink. There the Lord gave them laws to live by, and there he also tested them. He said, If you obey me completely by doing what I consider right and by keeping my commands, I will not punish you with any of the diseases that I brought on the Egyptians. I am the Lord, the one who heals you. Next they came to Elam, where there were twelve springs and seventy palm trees. There they camped by the water. Amen, and may God add his blessing to this reading of his holy word. Amen. Once again, uh, we worship God, and this time sing. As you heard just before the service, this hymn being played, Tell Out My Soul, Mission Praise number 631. Deserts are unfamiliar places for most of, all, uh, most of us, if not all of us. Has anybody had any experience of going to the desert and walking through the desert? No? Wilderness. Yes. Fantastic. That's good. Okay. You would relate to it better than all of us, maybe. Daytime, these uh, deserts are terribly hot. Uh, but uh, dropping to freezing point in the night, that's a possible. As you know, the, the desert radiates uh, uh, the, the heat back to the atmosphere. 
deserts are usually barren and um, and they are arid places uh, with no noticeable uh, vegetation or supply of water. Now my brother worked in uh, Pakistan, uh, a big desert, sandy kind of desert, uh, it's called Cholistan. Uh, he worked there for uh, a number of times, he went out on projects. Uh, and uh, he, he told uh, me that in the desert you can get lost so easily, not knowing if you don't live there, you can easily lose direction. You can be disorientated so easily. There can be a place of suffering, a place where survival becomes a daily struggle. And there can also be a place of testing where one's Courage, strength, resolve, and skills are put to extreme tests. Now in the Bible, deserts are often mentioned, mostly referred to as the wilderness. You know, David went to the wilderness or wandered in the wilderness Elijah went to the wilderness. Um, Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. So the people of Israel wandered in this desert or wilderness for 40 years. And so in Exodus chapter 15 verse 22 in our reading, we read this, then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea and then went to the desert of Shur. Now, for three days, they walked or traveled in the desert without finding water. Now imagine three, three days, young and old alike, wandering about trying to find water. And one can understand why they complained to him. I mean, if you continue reading from chapter 15 onwards and 17, uh, especially uh, this story, and then you go to the, the book of Numbers, there you find that one time Israelites wanted to kill Moses because they couldn't find water. These deserts or wilderness have spiritual parallel in that they speak of the dry and barren periods in our spiritual lives. You know, when there are times when joy and peace are absent from our lives for various different reasons. The enthusiasm is gone and we feel lethargic, don't want to do anything because the strength is not there that we used to have. So let me just point out uh, a, a few points uh, regarding the, de the experience of being in the desert or walking through the desert and the effects that these deserts can have on one's life. As I said earlier, deserts are barren, their surroundings are barren and can cause all kinds of negative effects. Uh, for instance, complaining, mourning, grumbling, all of these things can happen. And so firstly, a time in the desert can affect someone really negatively. It can affect their health and mental health. You see, the lack of provisions and resources can have a deep impact on one's personality, one's character, and even the whole lifestyle. And the most not noticeable effect would be negative. 
And so we have heard that when the Israelites walked through the desert and there was lack of water, they started complaining. And I can understand why. Because thirst can really put your whole life in danger. And so they grumble and criticize. However, they for, you know, quickly forgot the amazing power by which they were brought out of Egypt. And I think this same thing can be true for us spiritually. Our barren experiences are not always self-inflicted or circumstantially induced. They may be, not always, by divine decision. In other words, it is possible, it's not always, I would say occasionally, that God allows this barren experience or desert experiences to come in our life. Just as the children of Israel had to walk through the desert, they could, you know, only inherit the promised land by walking through the desert. And truth be told, given the choice, many of us would make every effort to avoid the desert experience. However, avoiding such times is neither beneficial nor avoidable. So walking through the desert is neither beneficial nor avoidable. Why? Because I believe there are moments of shaping and changing our lives. As someone has said, the place of frustration many a times is a place of preparation. Think about Joseph. He was taken away from his family into Egypt as a slave, ended up in prison of no fault of his own. And what happened? Through these experiences, he became the Prime Minister of Egypt. God would occasionally lead us through this, these circumstances that I, either they have a potential of causing us, um, you know, s uh, some pain, but at the same time, they would provide us an opportunity for spiritual growth. And so there is a value of being in the desert sometimes. Nobody would like that willingly. I wouldn't ask for a desert experience. But there is a value. And so what are these values? Let me just point it to three quickly. Um, that's correct. This is a desert experience. <laughs> and so what, what, what is, uh, you know, the, the, the benefit of being in the desert. The first thing, desert can be a place of refuge, a place of protection. You might say, how? You see, following a great victory over the Mount Carmel, I'm talking about Elijah, when he had to face about 450 
different priests of Baal and he won the victory against them and Queen Jezebel vowed to kill Elijah. Where did he go? He went to the desert in the wilderness. That's where he found protection and refuge. Then think about David, I mentioned earlier, when Saul was pursuing him and trying to kill him, he went to the desert and there he found refuge. Later on, his own son's armies really pursued him, they dethroned him, and again, they would find refuge in the desert. You know, the deserts are mostly thought of a kind of places of negative experiences. But in the Bible, these deserts in the wilderness are not always portrayed as places of suffering. During Israel's journey, God protected and led them day and night. It is quite instructive and I think it's fascinating to, to read Israelite's story as they walk through the desert. We find a number of places where God took special care of Israelites as they walked through the desert. Listen to this, please. From chapter 13 of, a book of, of the book of Exodus, verses 21 to 22. We read, During the day the Lord went in front of them in a pillar of cloud to show them the way, and during the night he went in front of them in a pillar of fire to give them light, so that they could travel day and night. The pillar of crowd was always in front of the people during the day and the pillar of fire at night. By night fire and during the day by clouds. Can you see some people as they walked through the desert might have thought that they were all alone and they are suffering because they couldn't find water or there was some shortage of food at times? But you see, God took care. He led them during the day and in the night so they can continue walk during the night and during the day. So deserts are not always a place of suffering. That could be a place of God's protection and guiding and leading. These places can be a place of experiencing God's presence. You see, the desert experience had been a time of amazing provision. When people complained about the food and meat, manna rained down from heaven. The quail you know, came, the water was provided, the guidance was there. The experienced, all of his lights, they experienced the miraculous daily protection, provision and divine presence in, a, in such a way that perhaps they would never be able to experience in any other way. I have mentioned previously even the Psalms of Lament speak to that very fact. The Psalms of Lament or the desert experiences bring us in a place where we not only know God in a special way but we also come to know ourselves, who we are. What is our worth in God's eyes? 
then certainly being in the desert can be a time of learning. You see, walking through the desert for Israelite was, in today's term, a time of reflection, a time of isolation, solitude. Here they learn to be totally dependent on God for food, for protection, for health, for security. All of these things they learned by being in the desert. You know, they learned to be <laughs> uh, relying on God's provision. You know, many a times we tend to rely on our own strength and our own relations and our own thoughts. And again, same can be true for us. I'm tempted to think we as a church and nation are going through this desert experience. But I'm more inclined to think that each one of us may be walking through this desert experience right now. Now I'm not going to ask everyone or anyone to either stand up or put, their, put, put your hand up as some so-called crusades, you know, uh, you can see that. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to come forward either. But you know what I mean. Some of us may be going through this desert experience today and right now. What wilderness are you going through? It's just a question for each one of us. As far as I am concerned, I have, I have been in the wilderness many a times in my own life. When I wondered where God was, where I questioned God and His presence, where I asked God, why are you not doing anything? And where I asked, why me? These desert experiences are common experiences, dare I say. And if that's the case for any of us this morning, any, any, any of uh, you who may be watching later on, please listen to this. The passage I'm going to read for you is from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 2. It is Joshua speaking to the people of Israel at the end of their desert journey. And here he, he says this, the Lord your God has blessed you in all the work of your hands. He has watched over your journey through this vast desert. These 40 years the Lord your God has been with you and you have not lacked anything. In other words, what Joshua is saying is this, this being in the desert is a transitory place. Desert is not our destination. The promised land is our destination. And as we walk through this transitory place, we move towards our destination. And it is God who is going to lead us and take us to this promised land. Now I'm not minimizing the pain and suffering that our time in the wilderness 
can cause because for some people it could be make or break time. Neither I am giving anybody a false hope or asking them to just rely on positive thinking and things will get better. However, just as God never left and abandoned Israelites, but walked with them through the desert. I don't know if you have noticed when I read this passage that in, during the day with a pillar of cloud, God walked ahead of them. And in the night, in this fire, he was still there. So he didn't bring them out of Egypt and left them in the desert and say, off you go to the problem land and I'll see you on the other end in the promised land. He walked with them at each moment and in a, every experience. Here in the desert, the Israelites received God's law that they could know what God thinks and what he likes, what he doesn't like. Here they found uh, or they received the, the whole kind of design and map of the temple later on they built. Such an experience. And so it is God who led them to the promised land. So he will walk with us in our time in the wilderness. The Apostle Paul, through his wilderness experiences or, or these desert experiences, tribulations, he wrote what I read for you earlier as, a, as our call to worship. But let me just read it again for you. He says, I have learned to be satisfied with what I have. I know what it is to be in need and what it is to have more than enough. I have learned the secret so that everywhere or anywhere, at any time, I am content. Whether I am full or hungry, whether I have too much or too little, I have the strength to face all these conditions by the power that Christ gives. It is by the power of Christ that we would walk through this transitory place into the promised land. Paul knew the way to be strong and courageous was through Christ and his strength. Not just in adversity, but also when he had much. Because it's possible. When people are in adversity, they abandon faith, but it's more when they have a lot. Then they don't think about God. And so Paul says in each experiences, experience he can do all these things through the power of Christ. So in conclusion, let me tell you this. Time in the desert can be hard, painful and frustrating. But please take comfort from the fact that God walks with us in the desert. He doesn't leave us or forsake us. You know, he has loved us so much that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, who himself experienced this desert in his own life. So much so that he was abandoned by his own friends. He was put to the cross. And yet through these experiences, he resolutely said each time, not my will, but yours be done and eventually he was vindicated he defeated the death and so when we go through these experiences it doesn't mean that he doesn't understand he knows everything about it 
because he experienced this himself. Just as he relied on his father's strength and will, would we rely on him? Would we say, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee? Take my love, my Lord, I pour at thy feet a treasure store. Take myself and I will be ever only all for thee. Let us sing this very hymn as we reflect on our desert experience. Mission praise number four, uh, 624. Take my life and let it be. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word which is fresh every day. We thank you for the encouragement it brings to us that no matter what we go through, you are with us. With that confidence of your presence being with us, Lord, we come before you and pray for many of our friends, people, around us and beyond. Those who are going through this desert experience and their experience is bringing them pain and suffering. Lord, we pray for them, whether they are in this country, whether they are in Canada or because of wildfire, in America, Ukraine, and many other countries. Lord, we pray for them. People who are in the midst of their desert. 
We pray for them and ask you to be with them. Lead them, guide them, encourage them. Give them comfort and peace. We also pray for our people in our congregation who are in the need of your presence at this time, who feel lonely, who feel uh, abandoned or forsaken, who think nobody cares. Those who are experiencing illness and sickness, Lord, have mercy upon them. Let your healing hand be upon them so that they can not only feel physical healing, but also spiritual restoration. And we now pray for these offerings which are offered in the name of Jesus and for his kingdom. Lord, we ask you to receive them, multiply them, and use them for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We conclude our service this morning. Our last hymn is Mission Praise number 400. Lead us, Heavenly Father. As you go from here, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the presence of the Holy Spirit continue to guard your heart your and your thoughts in Jesus Christ now and always. Amen. <laughs>